show you how to evaluate a limit in Microsoft Excel the old-fashioned way. And I mean by looking at x values. In this case, we're getting close to zero. Let's take x values closer and closer to zero, and notice the trend of this function to see. Let's get an estimation of what our limit would be. So they ask us to do that by again evaluating values close to x equals zero. So the first thing we need to do is define a function, and I'm going to call it f with an input of x. So that's why I put the underscore in the bracket. You do that when you're defining a function. And a very common mistake is to forget that trig functions should be capitalized because they are built-in Mathematica functions. So here's my expression. Now, for example, if I plug in f of 1, well, I get sine 1 and tan 1, which is not exactly what we want because we want a decimal value. So I'm going to put n around this expression. Now that'll take the numeric value of this expression. So we get our decimal points. All right, now what we need to do is we need to find the function values as x gets closer to zero. So I did it f of one, maybe I could do f of 0.5 and get closer and closer to zero that way. The power of Mathematica is that we can do that all at once. So let's set up a list of values that we want to plug in this function and I'm going to call this list x values. So here I have negative one, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.2, negative 0.1, so on, all the way down to negative 0.01. And now I'm going to do the same thing in the positive direction. And now I have 12 x values and I'm going to plug into this function and see if I can notice a trend. So a nice thing about Mathematica is that when you make a list of values like this, every item in the list has an index. So if I say something like this, x values double brackets 1, that's going to give me the first item in my list. So there it is, negative 1. So what I can do then is I'm going to make a table and my advice is always to once you open up a function, go ahead and close it because it's hard tracking down where you missed a parenthesis or a brace or something like that. I'm going to make a table of an order pair of x values, double brackets i, and f of x values, double bracket i. And I want that to go from 1 to 12. Okay, so again, I have a table, and the, what's in the table is an ordered pair of x value i and f of x value i. So that's the the x value of my list and its function value, and then i ranging from 1 to 12. And there they are. Now I can make it look even better if I wrap that in a table form. So if I wrap everything in table form, there it is. And I can see negative 1 down to negative 0 0.1. And look, we can see a trend, right? It looks like we're getting closer and closer to 0.5. Coming from the positive direction, so coming from the right, I have 1. 0.5 down to 0.01, and again, it looks like it's getting closer and closer to one half. So that would be my conclusion. Now, another way I could do this, notice if I use the print function, and I say something like this, print one f of one, it gives me the number one, and then the value I'd get when I plug one into the function. So another way I could generate the same table, and this is a trick I just learned, so I'm kind of excited about it, is I could do a print, let's do i, f of i, and I want these f of i values to come from the x values list. And the way you can do that, the way you can iterate over a list is with the do function. And so I'm, what I'm doing is printing i f of i, and those i's come from the list of x values. So now when I do this, it gives me the same listing. Look, negative 1, negative 0.5, and it gives me the same function values, and it's pulling directly from our x value list, which I think is pretty cool. All right, so we did the same thing twice, and looking at the trend, it looks like we are going to say the limit goes to 0.5. So I'm going to press Alt 7. Alt 7 is the hotkey that allows you to start typing in text. And I'm going to say from the trend we notice in our table, we conclude that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x plus tan x is 0.5. That is what we conclude, and that's how we would do it. Now, I'll just show you real quickly how you can verify that with the limit function. So if I say the limit of f of x is x approaches 0, look, it does the work for us. It gives us the value of 1 half. So you can always check your calculations by using the limit function if needed, but we wanted to do it using a table of values like this. I hope this makes sense. Mathematics is an awesome tool. I hope you see that by now. Just keep working at it, keep learning. Let me know if you have any questions, and thank you for watching.